Hello crew, I want to talk to you about what to pack for sea base. If you look in your participant guide on page 27, you'll see a packing list. What you're going to notice real quick is that this packing list is very short. Now I spoke to CBA about this last Friday and I can tell you they look at this as a guide, not an all-inclusive list. What I'm going to attach to this email for you is the all-inclusive list and that's what you need to pack and that's what we're going to go over today. If you just follow this and don't listen to me, you're going to be missing some stuff on your sea base trip. It's going to make you very uncomfortable, like underwear. Before we get to what you have to pack, we have to talk about what you need to fit it in. So when we get to sea base, they're going to give us a bag, and whatever device you use to get your stuff to sea base has to come out of that device and go into their bag. So for the airplane, you can use either a backpack like you would use for school, you can use a small carry-on suitcase, or you can use a duffel bag. I'm going to recommend a duffel bag because that's very, very close to what we're going to get at sea base. Some dimensions you need to be aware of. Get out your measuring tape. Because otherwise, when we go to get on the airplane, if you didn't do this and your bag is too big, you're going to be on the hook for a $25 additional cost for them to check your bag. Which also means we might get it lost on the way to Florida. So let's not do that. The dimensions for the bag that you can bring on the airplane are 22 inches by 14 by 9. Let me show you what that looks like. This fits those dimensions. And this is going to be the bag that I'm using for sea base. Uh, this bag is 20 inches long and it's got about an 11 inch diameter. That'll fit. It'll squish down and make that 14.9 without a problem. So now that we've talked about what to put your stuff in, let's talk about what stuff you need to bring. So when we're flying out there, we are not going to be in our field uniform, formerly known as the Class A. We're just going to wear our activity uniform, or what we've called Class B for years. So you should be showing up to the airport with your scout shorts. Got socks, belt, I hope you're wearing some sort of underwear underneath there. And then let's all wear our sea base short sleeve shirt so we can find each other in the airport. So that's what you're going to be wearing. This is not going to be packed in your bag. Now let's talk about what to pack in your bag. So the first thing is going to be your long sleeve shirt that we got from sea base. Everybody should have one if you haven't lost it since I gave it to you. On top of that, we also want to bring another short sleeve shirt, and it should be a quick drying, moisture wicking type material. Uh, it doesn't have to be your troop shirt, even though that's what I'm bringing, because it's a very good shirt. So between this one and the one you're wearing, you're going to have two short sleeve shirts, and you're going to have one long. So you'll have two in the bag, and you're wearing one. Another shirt you need to bring, and this is only going to be used once during our trip, and this is for our big party on Thursday night before we leave is your luau shirt. So you're going to want some sort of Hawaiian luau flowery type of shirt. Okay? Put that in your bag. On top of that you're going to want two pairs of socks. You don't need knee-high socks. We're going to Florida. It's going to be hot. Just short little socks like this is fine. Another thing you're going to want there's another pair of shorts. So this will give you two. The pair you're wearing and the pair that's going to be in your bag. I told you that list that was in your book isn't right. Here's a good example of that. It only calls for one pair of swim shorts. Well, as we know, one pair of swim shorts is not going to dry out quick enough for the next day. And if you wear wet shorts, what happens? That's right, chafing. So let's not do that. Bring two pairs of swim trunks. One to wear, one to get dry for the next day. Make sure you have your wide brim hat of some sort, whether it's one like this or one you picked up from Jamboree. A headlamp with brand new batteries in it. You don't need to bring extra batteries as long as you make sure the ones that are in here are brand new. Another reason we're wearing our activity shorts for the way down there, not only to be in uniform, but the list calls for lightweight pants. Well, instead of bringing a set of pants that you have to get in that small bag, all you need to do is bring your legs for your scout shorts. And now you have your set of pants. A 
rain gear. You gotta make sure to bring rain gear. So you have two options there. You can bring a full blown, big, takes up a lot of room raincoat, but it's comfortable. Or we're only gonna be there for a few days. Just get a cheap poncho, throw that in there. If we use it a couple times and it rips, no big deal. Who cares? Just like the swim trunks, you're gonna want two towels. Okay, one to dry off with after we're swimming in the ocean, chasing the dolphins and the turtles, but also one to be nice and clean for when we're taking our showers, and not have it full of salt water. For sleeping, you're gonna want something to sleep in. A pair of gym shorts is all you need. You don't want something to put your head on. So you can do an inflatable pillow. You can do a stuff sack that you're gonna put some of your clothes in, the ones that don't smell yet. Or you can bring a pillow. It's got to fit in the bag though, so it's got to be some sort of small pillow. This is dual purpose. This will do you well on the airplane as well. Now to sleep on, you either need to bring a very lightweight sleeping bag, uh, like one from Walmart that says it's 45 degrees or better. Uh, you can also do a sleeping bag liner and just bring the liner, don't bring the sleeping bag. Or you can just bring a bed sheet. Uh, it's really just something to keep the bugs off you at night. You're not going to be cold. You also need to bring a set of sandals or flip-flops or water shoes. When we're on the boat, you're not going to be allowed to wear your sneakers, so that's why you need those. Uh, most of the captains are going to tell us before we even step on their boat, take off your shoes, and then they will stow them down below, and we won't see them again until we step on land. This is a very important one. This is a TSA regulation. This is what's going to get you stopped at security and pulled into the little room without me if you don't follow this. You cannot have any bottles with more than three ounces of liquid in them. It's actually like three point something, but three ounces is what you need to remember. Anything bigger than this, and they're going to confiscate it from you, which means you cannot bring a big bottle of Yoohoo in your bag. You're going to get stopped at security, and you're going to get in trouble little bottles. On top of that, all these little bottles have to fit in one quart size Ziploc bag. So any liquid bottles, like the one for my body wash and like the one for the shampoo, any paste, hence toothpaste, and any other sort of paste, like deodorant. All has to go in the same bag. You can't have multiple bags. Only one bag per person. And it has to be a quart size bag. So for backpacking, you guys are used to the gallon size bags. This is normally we put all the clothes in for a day. Notice they're much smaller. This is your bag. It's just a little bit bigger than a sandwich bag. That's all you get. Your toothbrush does not have to go in that bag. Don't forget two pairs of underwear to get you through the week. Something quick drying. Don't bring cotton stuff that's going to stay wet all week. Quick drying underwear just like we did for Heinol. I hope you did for Heinol. Any medicines that you might take, which includes if you wear contacts, stuff for your contacts. And bring some sort of strap for your glasses, whether they're your sunglasses, which need to be polarized, or your everyday glasses that you need to see. If you lean over the boat and those things fall in the water without one of these on, you're not getting them back. You're not going to be able to snorkel down that deep to get them. So make sure you have some sort of device like this. No matter how goofy it looks, you'll have your glasses the whole week. You'll be much happier. Nobody will make fun of you for this because we're all going to have one. Water bottles. You can either bring your water bottle with you, like I'm going to do, or you can buy a water bottle down there. They sell the Nalgene style water bottles down there and they're 13 bucks and of course they'll say sea base on it. Um, but it will not come with a carabiner. So you got to make sure you bring your carabiner to hook to your bottle so that it can attach to the lifeline on the boat. Now I already told you about liquids going through security, right? So what does that mean? This cannot be filled with water. It needs to be empty in your bag. 
don't fill it with water and then come to the airport. We're going to have a problem at security. And it won't be a problem with me, guys. It'll be a problem with TSA. They have no sense of humor. And if you want to bring a camera, again, just like the sunglasses, make sure you have some way to keep it off the bottom of the ocean. It should be a waterproof camera. Even if you bring a camera and you don't think you're going to get it wet, we're going to be on a boat in salt water, your camera is going to get wet. Make sure it's a waterproof camera. I will have my waterproof camera. I'll have my big camera as well for the pictures we're taking above the water. But if you still want to bring your own, by all means, go ahead and do it. Just make sure you have a flotation device. We will not have a way to charge it though. So if it goes through batteries quickly, you either bring a battery pack that you can charge it with or bring multiple batteries. On top of that, you don't need to bring these because I'm going to have them with me in my bag, but I am going to bring you guys a deck of cards, regular cards and then Uno cards, so we will have entertainment on the boat. And then finally, sleeping pads. You can either bring a sleeping pad like this, or you can bring an inflatable one, doesn't matter. I'm going to put everything in the bag and I'm going to show you how to put this on the top of the bag because obviously you're not going to fit this inside that bag. But we can put it on top of the bag and it will still make it through as a carry-on so you don't have to check it. And the only thing I don't have to show you here unfortunately, uh, but I have to tell you about is to bring cash of some sort. Uh, Seabase is recommending anywhere between 125 to 175. Some of the things I want to remind you about you're going to need money for. We're going to need lunch on the day we get down there. We're going to eat somewhere in the Florida Keys on the way. And then we're going to need money for lunch on the day we leave. And that lunch is going to be right near the airport or maybe even in the airport. On top of that, you're going to want to buy souvenirs. Uh, you're going to want to buy snacks when we stop halfway through the week. We're going to go out for two days and be on the ocean. And then we're going to come back for a day and park at a marina before we go back out to the ocean again. When we're at that marina, that's a good chance for us to shower, get our clothes washed, uh, but also they'll have a store there, and I'm sure that's where some of you are going to be running to get your Yoohoo bottles. So you're going to want money for that. One thing we didn't talk about was sunblock and insect spray. Even though that's on the list, you notice I didn't pack it, and there's a reason for that. When we're going through security, we are restricted by this little bag. And as you can see, that little bag is pretty full already. Now imagine if I try and stick another bottle in there with sunblock, and another thing of insect spray, I'm probably not going to fit it all. But on top of that, Seabase sells that stuff. And we've looked at the prices, they actually sell it for the same price, or a cheaper price, than what we can find it online for. So the bug spray, they sell for $12, and the sunblock, they sell for $6.50. So my suggestion is going to be, don't worry about those two items, we'll just buy them when we get down there. Depending on the size of the bottle, we might pair off. Two of you guys will go together, one of you buy the sunblock, one of you buy the insect spray. If they end up to be personal size bottles, then just everybody buy one. And we'll leave it down there, we're not going to try and fly All back. Alright crew, so to recap, if you've never flown before, these are some good things that we need to know and to make sure we're on the same page with. This little quarter size Ziploc bag, make sure when you're packing your bag, that you pack everything in your bag and then put this on the top. When we go through security, you'll have to open your bag send your bag through the x-ray machine and this will go by itself through the x-ray machine. The other thing we talked about was the water bottles and in case you haven't heard me say this 200 times already I'll say it again has to be plastic cannot be a metal water bottle has to be plastic no exceptions. And the one thing I didn't mention about the towels but I want to make sure that you guys are on the same page as I am Make sure it's a little towel. Don't bring one of the big beach towels. It's all big and fluffy, and when you roll it up, it's like three times the size of this. And if you can, bring one that's some sort of quick dry material as well. You're only going to have two of these, and one of them you're going to be using every day because we're going to be in the water every day. So something that's quick drying is not going to smell by the first day, but it's still small enough to fit in your bag. All right, crew. So I paused the video for a minute so that I could pack everything that I showed you into this bag. There's nothing that I showed you that's not in this bag right now. One of the tips that I gave you was to keep your stuff on the top of the bag. This bag has an external zipper 
And as you notice, there's my quart size Ziploc with all my stuff ready to come out when we go through security. If you don't have that, just make sure it's sitting right on the top so you can get to it really quickly. For your pads, take your pad and stick it on top of your bag and just smush it down a little bit. It's nothing but clothes in that bag. And hook your handles together. And that's how you'll go through security. And when we get on the plane, that's how you'll put this on the plane in the overhead compartment. Miss Mullen also has tags for you guys already. And this will go on everybody's carry on case. So it's the JetBlue tag. And we would have already filled out all your information on here. So we'll give that to you at the airport Saturday morning. If you have any questions, as always, call me, email me, text me, ask the questions. Because if you're thinking of it, so is somebody else, and it might be something I need to cover before we leave. Other than that, look forward to seeing you guys, and we're going to have a blast in the Florida Keys for a week.